Let's talk about the Rayos over in Italian Harlem in New York. John Rayo, uh, I think his actual name was Vincent John Rayo, uh, was a conciliary for the Lucchese family for decades. He was born in Palermo. His mother's distant cousin was the Lucchese family founder, Gietno Gagliano. Gietno, I found out, would be Guy in English. I didn't know that. Uh, Vinny Rayo was a short, stout guy, badly tempered, hyper aggressive. He went to work for his uncles as a thug. Um, there were mob guys on both sides of the family. They were black handers in uh, East Harlem. And then he joined up with the 107th Street Gang under a very young Tommy Lucchese, who answered to Rihanna, Giatno Rihanna, who was a mafia boss. Lucchese promoted Rayo over the years, and uh, he had, by that time, Rayo had a pretty good criminal uh, record. Uh, his operations were extensive by that time he ran gambling and a lot of other stuff. The standards, the gangster stuff in East Harlem, Bronx, West, way up Westchester County. Uh, and then he was, of course, promoted to Lucchese's consigliere. By then, uh, Rayo had, as I said, five arrests uh, starting in 1919. No convictions. Uh, it included, however, an arrest for homicide, grand larceny, violation of the idiot Sullivan law, which says you can't have a gun. In 1957, that was a New York law. In 1957, Rayo was arrested with 60 other mobsters at the Appalachian uh, meeting that was foiled. When the judge, uh, I'm sorry, when the investigators pull him before them in December 1957, uh, they asked why was he there? And he said, well, I heard they had a terrific luncheon buffet. He said he didn't know nothing about nobody. He didn't know the other 59 guys are there. Never heard of them. I, I had not been introduced to them before the arrival of the police, he said. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, he took the fifth 44 times in 30 minutes. Uh, he, oh, I'm sorry, but he did admit that he knew Frank Costello, Luke Luciano, Jack Dragna, Willie Moretti, Longies Willman. Uh, but other than that, he said he didn't know nothing about nothing. It didn't matter. His presence there and the fact that Joe Valacci would soon finger him as a big shot in the mob put him under extreme uh, intense pressure by the, by the government. In 1965, the feds, the FBI, tried to convict him for perjury. They did send him to prison for five years. They managed to accomplish that. Regardless, after Tommy Lucchese died, Rayo, who was by then a multi, multi-millionaire, the estimates are from the U.S. federal government that his fortune was around $50 million in 1957. He remained the consigliere, the advisor under boss Carmen Tremonuti. Uh, he died of natural causes on September Vincent 25, Rayo's 1980. Cousin, uh, Joe, tough Joe Rayo. Well, he gave that name himself, I would think. But anyway, he um, he was an interesting guy. Uh, he was a drug dealer, and he ran a policy bank, and he financed a lot of crimes. And for a short time, he was known as the slot machine king of Harlem. What they mean by that is East Harlem, Italian Harlem. He lived there in East Harlem, uh, not far from where Rayo's restaurant is today. Um, his record was slim. He got locked. He was convicted in 1922 on burglary. He got a suspended sentence in 1932. They got him for extorting payments out of an Italian uh, bottling plant owner. He went to prison for that. In 1936, Rayo and his bodyguard, this guy named Joe Petri, were convicted. They were in a club uh, on 106th Street in East Harlem, and they were drunk. And the cop told them to go home, blah, blah, blah. One thing later, they beat the cop pretty bad, Edward Smith. So they take Petri, the bodyguard, to one place, but they take the cops take Rayo. He's arrested, and they take him to the 126th Street station, the precinct house, and they beat him bad. His lawyer shows up in the morning to get him. He's, he's a messy. Let's go. We'll, we'll sue these guys. Let's go to a doctor. He's no, I'm tough. I can take it. Uh, I don't want no doctor treating me. It was a matter of principle. He thought that going to the doctor after a cop beating was weak. So, uh, Rayo uh, was. This is where he entered history. He joined up with Dutch Schultz, and it was about that time that he earned his place. And this is 1931. Rayo was locked in this uh, war with this upstate beer baron named Joe One-Eyed Rock. Where do these people get these names? Who, again, was upstate guy. And he had 
two guys working for him, Vincent Mad Dog Cole, who was literally an Irish gang. He was from Ireland, and Frank Giordano. Um, on July 28, 1931, they drive up to the Helmer Social Club on 210th, uh, 107th Street in Harlem, East Harlem. And they see Rayo, who they're looking for. They're armed with machine guns and shotguns. He's outside sunning himself. The reason, one of the reasons they they were coming to get him is he, Rayo, the week before, had called up the Green County Police Department in New York, uh, in New York State. And he says, look, you can find members of the Rock Gang at this house. He gives them an address. Uh, and these guys are wanted for various crimes. And he says, they're deadly. They've got the weapons. And the cops, big force, they show up. They got machine guns and so forth. They arrest all eight of Rock's guys. Rock's pissed. He's had enough. He arms Cole and, and Giordano with machine guns, shotguns, pistols. Go kill him. So they pull up. There's Rayo sunning himself. They shoot. They do wound Rayo, but they seriously wounded four little kids teeny kids and they killed a five-year-old boy michael vangeli and they shot him through the groin, groin it took the poor child eight hours to die his brother sal who was seven was shot in the back uh, another kid michael belvoca was age three he was shot his sister but michael's sister was wheeling him in a carriage when the bullet struck sam del vito age six was shot in the leg florence diamillo was shot in the shoulder despite that florence grabbed her god bless her grabbed her, her little brother hugged him shielded him with her body and ran uh through the gunfire imagine that into a nearby store oh, boy that caused an international outrage people were pissed it didn't go away for a long long time uh, the funerals were put on the radio. There's no television. Were put on the radio live. It was. Uh, they came from Europe to cover it, to cover the shootings. The newspaper guys. Uh, it put a lot of heat, and that really pushed. Rayo had managed to fade into the darkness, but after this, he was he was big time. So Schultz gets murdered October 1935. The Genovese family takes over all his gamings, his numbers, rackets in Harlem, which were massive. Um, he ran like a lottery. You could pay a penny and, and join this lottery, the, the numbers game. And uh, but people a lot of pennies, and he got a lot of, it was a, where, where they dealt in quantity, you know? So pennies add up. Rayo joined Genovese, and he ran their narcotics business in East Harlem. He ran a piece of their numbers game. So in 1946, uh, Rayo and this crazy guy, Trigger Mike Coppola, who may have killed his own wife, they were implicated in the murder of Joe Stark. I'm going to screw this up. Scott Torgorio, a Republican Party election captain. They beat him to death in Lower East Harlem. Rhea was placed under a $40,000 bond, and he's held as a material witness. It went on for a long time. It was a big stink. The, even in New York, they just weren't used to political people being beaten to death. But eventually, remarkably, like the kids being killed, it, that too went away. In 1950, Rayo and his brother-in-law, Joe Stretch Stracci, Stracci uh, were named during a state investigation into corruption uh, by District Attorney Frank Hogan, who I want to point out grew up on the street I grew up on. Um, and he went to the same schools I went to when he was a boy, so, uh, in the same parish. He was trying to remove um, a judge named uh, Francis Mancuso from his post. He was a Democrat party leader. Uh, on May 10, 62, Rayo, he's now 61, he suffers a heart attack at his home. He's still living in East Harlem. A private ambulance takes him to the Columbia Hospital. I'm sorry, no, there it's called Columbus Hospital. Uh, but he died 20 minutes after arriving. The world didn't miss him. Uh, but by then, he was a big power in the Genovese family. He's considered uh, within the family to be a fair and reasonable judge of internal disputes and so forth. Rayo's restaurant... You can buy Rails products in the supermarket. They have Rails meatballs. There's sauces to die for. It really is good, I have to say. Uh, the rest of they have frozen foods. And, you know, they're not bad as frozen foods go. Uh, where I live, I, I don't know why. There's no Italian restaurant. I, I, I cannot for the life of me understand that. But So I have to deal with frozen stuff unless I feel like drove, driving into the district or I make my own. But Rails is good, I must say. Anyway, it's on East uh, 114th Street in what had been Italian Harlem, a little Italy. Uh, 
Uh, it was started in 1896 by a guy named Joshua Rayo. He ran the restaurant until his death in 1909. And then uh, this very suave Louis Rayo took over. He died in 1999. The restaurant was taken over by Frank Pellegrino. Remember, who, you know who he is? He played the FBI chief, Frank Cubastillo, Cubastillo on the Atrial Sopranos. I'll uh, put a picture up in here for you. Uh, he also played Johnny Dio in Martin Scorsese's Goodfellow. He's the guy cooking, and he says, oh, gourmet, that's him. Uh, something interesting happened. One day, this Lucchese guy, associate, Albert Cercelli, insulted this Broadway singer, uh, Rena Strober. They were both in the restaurant, and she was performing Don't Rain on My Parade uh, at Rayo's at Table 10. She was trying to entertain somebody. It was nice of her. So uh, Sir Celli yells out something very disrespectful. So this is Lucchese bookmaker, Louis Barone. He tells him, you know, sit down, show some respect. And the, the other guy says, so watch your mouth. Uh, Sir Celli answers, go fuck yourself. Uh, Sir Celli, he starts to leave the restaurant. Barone pulls out a 38 and he shot him in the back. He killed him at the table. So um, Another round hit a diner. Some poor guy who was just eating. It shot him in the foot. Uh, Barone dropped the revolver. He walked out of the restaurant, but the cops got him before he got to his car. <laughs> Thank you.